<clears throat> hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Uh, welcome to today's CNCF Live webinar, Kubernetes 1.28 release. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating the webinar today. I'm gonna read our code of conduct and then hand over to Grace Wen, release team lead and Atarva Shinde, enhancements team lead from the Kubernetes 1.28 release team. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak as an attendee, but we welcome and encourage you to drop all your questions into the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF, and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They will be available via your registration link you used to join today, and the recording will be on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I'll hand it over to Grace and Aturba to kick off today's presentation. Take it away. Thank you, Libby. Um, hi everyone, my name is Grace and I was the uh, release team lead for the 1.28 release. Um, and if Atara wants to go to the next slide to introduce himself. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Atharva. I'm from India. I'm the version 1.28 announcements lead. And uh, the, the, there's one other folk with us who is not able to join us today, but he is Brad, who was the Kubernetes 1.26 comms lead for uh, the release team, uh, 1.28 comms lead for the release team. So yeah, th this was the basic introduction about us. Grace, over to you. Yeah, um, so this release is made up of a lot of folks. Um, so these are the people that contributed to the 1.28 release, um, many of whom has now gone on to work on the 1.29 release, uh, which started on Monday. So a huge shout out to them and all the work that they put into this so that we can have a new release. Um, the theme for this release is Planternetis um, because it is summer here where I am in the Northern Hemisphere. And I thought a garden was a really good um, symbol for our open source ecosystem. The fact that we all have a very unique backgrounds and roles, um, but each of us is really critical to the ecosystem. Yeah. I'll talk about the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes. So Kubernetes has a process uh, for those that, uh, for the features that may be, may be major themes or that may be user facing. So these, these enhancements go through a process, um, pro uh, a release tracking process and they go Have to build up announcement for uh, for the announcement they are planning to propose around five and graduated to version one point two eight, among which uh, these announcements that have uh, started with stage alpha are nine announcements that moved to stage beta are fourteen and um, around twelve um, announcements have graduated to stage stable. So yeah. now, so unfortunately, is... yeah, unfortunately, yeah. We, we won't be able to go through each of the enhancements because that will take a bit of time. But Tatava and I will go through um, some major themes that we think you should know about. So uh, first off, we have changes to supported SKU between control plane and note version. So um, upgrading to new version um, is a pain point among folks in the community, and hopefully this will make it easier. What this means is that the version of your control plane and your node version, note that this is minor, not major version, um, they can be three apart instead of two apart now. Um, and this will hopefully uh, support you to upgrade your control plane um, and then your node um, easier. This enhancement is now in stable and you can go to the link here to read more about it. It is also on our blogs. Um, next up, 
we have uh, recovery from non-graceful note shutdown. So this is the, in the event of a broken OS or broken hardware situation where um, the shutdown is unexpected and hard to detect by the kubelet. Um, this enhancement will support um, the stateful sets pots uh, to be recovered. So I think of it as you know the pots that are stuck in the node that is being shut down will get airlifted. Um, yeah. And then we have this feature is currently in beta improvements to custom resource definition validation rules. That's a mouthful, um, but this is uh, one of the enhancements that uh, incorporate the common expression language, uh, which is one of the ways that you can declare rules uh, for your custom resource definitions now. And uh, to use that, you have two uh, optional field, reason and field path for you to specify. Um, next up, another one that is also uh, related to cell or common expression language is now you can use cell um, to enforce customizable policies within your YAML. And in order to do this, you need to enable the two things um, that we outlined there. This feature is also in beta. So uh, the amazing thing about version 1.28, among the very other new announcement is uh, we we officially uh, now have sidecar containers available. So the way you can use the sidecar containers, uh, the init containers are used as a sidecar container, and you can enable this sidecar container by uh, mentioning the restart policy field in your init container specification, and if you if you omit the restart policy specification field uh, from the init from your init container specification, that means you just want your pure container. And to try this feature, will the sidecar container should get available. Uh, moving on to another new announcements that we've got. Uh, the status of the uh, the mixed proxy version. So let's say you have a multiple containers in your clusters and you're trying to access a resource of a, of an a, from an API server which isn't supported by your API server because there are a lot of lot of API version API servers with multiple versions. So how to deal with this? So there's a there's an announcement called mixed version proxy. So through this you the announcement to one of the APRs inside your clusters, uh, which can satisfy request that you are trying to access the resource to. So you can enable this uh, announcement with uh, the unknown version interoperability proxy feature gate. Uh, the next uh, announcement we have is support uh, for the uh, support for enabling swap space on Linux. So the announcement was introduced in 1.22, but uh, it, it, it has graduated to in 1.28. So it, this swap, the swap support was actually not available in Kubernetes, but from 1.22, 1.22, it was made available. But uh, stay for 1.28, as it has graduated to stage beta, it is now become more reliable and it is now more controllable on how you can swap, uh, how you can uh, enable the swap support on your system. So uh, now you now it is possible to also monitor what what uh, what's happening inside the swap inside your swap usage. Uh, this this feature is only for the control groups of version two. From uh, for the uh, version one that is released. Uh, this is more of a general uh, general announcement. So we have now started reorganizing the control plane. So uh, to, uh, this effort is being made to enable the end users uh, or the Kubernetes API users to uh, get all the necessary functions into one staging repository. And it's 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 now 
being uh, done in a more gradual kind of way. It is, is not the summary of this uh, announcement is that the initiative has now stopped. Uh, the another uh, feature that we have for 1.2 it works. This is now uh, graduated to stage beta. So what this uh, announcement does, uh, it lets you define conditions for your webhooks for when the Kubernetes should make the HTTP call uh, for admission for while the admission process. So this ad this match con conditions should be totally satisfied. Uh, in order to make the call to the webhook you want to uh, request to. And currently the match conditions, uh, match conditions are in the form of uh, common express, uh, common expressive language. And uh, you, you can have up to 64 match conditions for a single webhook. And it is, as it has graduated to beta, match conditions uh, field is now enabled by default. Um, yeah, over to you, Grace. Yeah, thank you. Um, another stable features that we shipped is automatic retroactive assignment of default storage class. So in the past, um, you need to create a default storage class first and then assign a PPC to the class. Um, now, um, the control planes will set a storage class for any existing PVC that doesn't have the storage class name defined. Um, so that way the PVC is no longer stuck in an unbound stage. Um, this feature uh, is, has previously existed as alpha and beta, uh, but starting with stable, it is automatic and always active. Next up, we have a pot replacement policy for jobs. Um, so what this means is we are offering um, an additional and more flexible pot replacement policy for jobs that allows the pot to uh, be started only when it's fully terminated. That's an optional behavior instead of uh, when the termination process starts. Um, and this is specifically applicable for folks who are running machine learning workloads um, as this will prevent um, clashing between the pods and also uh, help you manage the resources within your nodes. Um, and then last but not least, um, this is not a major theme, but it's part of the release and uh, rather a, a large one. Um, package.ks.io uh, is a community owned package repository that we uh, recently introduced and it will replace um, apt.kubernetes.io and yum.kubernetes.io. Um, currently, you can opt in into this new uh, package repository, but um, the uh, deprecation of the old uh, package repository is already in place and will be deprecated starting from September 13, 2023. Um, this will only affect user um, who directly install upstream versions of Kubernetes. If you use fully managed Kubernetes through a cloud providers, um, you likely won't be affected. Um, this might affect you also if you run Linux on your own PC and installed kubectl using the legacy package repository. Um, the latest blog on um, Kubernetes.io block is about this. So if you're curious if you're affected or not, you can explore more there. Um, but that is it for our major theme. Uh, just uh, information for all the folks around here uh, to get a more detailed view on each and every announcement, you can follow the Kubernetes 1.28 blog that has been posted on the Kubernetes.io website. So yeah, go give it a uh, Give it a read, so it's amazing, yeah. I will drop it in the chat. There we go. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about our release team shadow program. That is how Brad and I and Atarva uh, began our journey on the release team. Um, so the shadow program for the 1.29 release has started already um, as the uh, Team started on Monday and the release is expected to end uh, around December.
But if you're interested, um, the application is for 1.30 will open um, around December and we have many roles. Um, each release is about four months um, and we're very beginner friendly. Um, no experience required. When I got started, I was in first year university and didn't have any open source experience and it's been an amazing journey so far. Um, and Atari, do you want to speak anything else on the uh, release to shadow process? I just want to echo this, that there's no technical requirement as such. A lot of folks start to ask that, what skills do you need? What technical skills are asked in order to apply for the shadow rules? Uh, there's no such technical uh, requirement that is needed. You just have to, uh, uh, you just have to be good at communications and be a team player, that's all. And you're just good to go. So yeah, do apply for the version 1.30 uh, Kubernetes release. And yeah. Um, someone in the chat asked, they missed how to join the shadow role. Is there a URL for signing up? Unfortunately, it was due uh, last Friday and the application is closed already. Um, but the next cycle application will open in December. So keep your eyes out then. If you want to uh, sign up for updates, you can sign up for SIG release mailing list or uh, join the SIG release channel on Slack. And um, upcoming events, we have QCon NA in November in Chicago. Um, if you're a contributor, there's also the Contributor Summit that I love to attend, and you will get to see sick release folks there if you have any other questions. But beside that, that is the end of our webinar. Um, it's very fast now that we only talk about major <laughs> themes instead of the entire 45 enhancements. We've wrapped up in around 20. How much minutes? Nine. Twenty minutes. Yeah. About, yeah. 20 yeah. Minutes. yeah. Yeah. Back in the days, I remember one point. It was an hour long. Yeah. I yeah. Remember. One point when I was in the hands of the lead, it took it took a long time. I don't know how everyone was helpful that way, but I like this way more. Okay. So, do anyone does anyone have any questions for us? Related to enhance, uh, in a, related to general Kubernetes release process, or any major themes. Yeah, feel free to drop in the chat. We are keeping our eyes on it. If not, thank you folks for stopping by. And Libby, is there anything we need to do to wrap this up? All right. Thank you guys so much. Are there any questions from anyone? Any questions we want to hop in on? <laughs> That was fast and furious. Good job, y'all. Thank you for um, hosting us. Have If anyone has any questions or wants to follow up, um, will Grace and Atarva put your uh, handles in the chat? And that way, anybody can follow up with y'all just in case. And otherwise, we will have this recording up in probably the next hour or so. Fantastic. Awesome. That was great, y'all. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for hosting us, Libby. And All thank right. you, everyone, for attending. Time. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Grace and Atarva. Bye.